Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday to you guys again. I am so excited to talk to you about how to plan your style brain shoot for wild, wild fun and success. So you can walk away feeling like, man, I have a lot of good stuff to work with. I have something that um, I'm really proud of to show in my brand and I wasn't stressful at all. Last week, some of you know that I had a styled branding shoot. I hadn't had one for some time, and I was planning on sharing some behind the scenes tips and tricks that I've learned. Um, one, as a photographer, but two, just being the person being photographed, I really feel most comfortable behind the camera, being in front of the camera. And I go live in here, but that's different, right? I'm in a teaching mode. I'm, I'm engaging in a different element, but to, to establish myself as a brand in front of a, you know, nice big honking DSLR camera that can feel really intimidating because, you know, we don't often see ourselves as celebrity or anything like that. And um, so that's what I'm sharing with you guys today. But before I get into that, and if you see me looking in two directions, that's because I'm going live on Instagram for the first time, which is really exciting. I don't know how long it'll let me go live for, but um, hopefully I'll get all of this out within the right amount of time. But I wanted to let you guys know that I am wrapping up two client projects. And that means my calendar is opening up for two client spaces for coaching. And so if you don't know what my coaching package is, it is a six month one to one hand holding program that allows us for the first 90 days of that six months, the first three months, um, to really dial in who it is that you're talking to. Um, really try out certain strategies for your industry, for your niche, to really get clear on some things, to figure out what works for you, what doesn't. And then we refine in the next 90 days to really make sure that we're building a system that you can use over and over again so that I can step away and you've got this totally 100%, like you've got a good grasp on it. And so that's a six month program. I have space in my calendar for two slots. And the whole goal of it is to help you land your first or maybe your next one-to-one -one clients, especially if you haven't nailed down your like feast and famine cycles in your business. And so this is going to really help you know exactly what to expect when you're running a business and how to always kind of build a pipeline and tap of one-to-one -one clients, you know, who are ready to work with you. And so this is stuff that I've been doing for the last three years. And um, again, I'll be wrapping up a couple client projects here and I'm opening up my calendar for two spaces. So if you are interested in one-to-one -one coaching, um, look for a link nearby. Um, it's at my website, brittanyrossi.com slash launch your legacy now. And um, if you're watching in my group, it'll be posted in this video. If you're catching this on the replay in a blog post or on the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. The link will be nearby somewhere. And on Instagram, it's in my link in bio. So with that out of the way, I really am excited to dig into some specifics about how to prepare for your first photo shoot or maybe your next one because you didn't really like how it turned out, but you're not really sure why. Was it the photographer? Was it your location? Was it poor planning? Was it stressful? Um, I'd love to know from you and also let me know if you're watching live or you're catching the replay drop like hashtag replay so I can know if you're catching it later. But you know, there are some really powerful ways that you can build a personal brand um, and one of the most powerful ways is by being in your own photos, but you have to look like you feel good and feel confident in those photos so that people can really get a good vibe for who it is and who you are. If you're, if you're looking like you're kind of uncomfortable and stiff and it, like you're wearing makeup, like you don't normally wear it. And it's like, ah, that's not, that's not me. And that doesn't feel good. And so I've talked with a lot of women, like one person, they had um, gorgeous, gorgeous photos. She's like, but I don't wear makeup like that. And like all my live videos, like my makeup is much more dialed down. I just doesn't, it doesn't feel like me. It feels like the, I'm wearing the wrong coat. And so here are some tips on how to make sure that like you feel really good about this investment because it is an investment. Hello. Hello, everybody joining me live on Instagram. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, and let me know if you are catching this live, have you done a photo shoot and did it go well or not? Um, I would love to know if, if you've had this experience before. And if you do have tips in addition to mine, please share them. Like, I don't know all there is to know about branding photo shoots, but I just had one. I want to share with you what I learned. So again, um, if you are just starting to build your own brand, stock images are a great place to start. Um, some really nice 
selfies or having somebody take a picture of you with your cell phone, that is an awesome place, totally okay place to start. Um, but when you start um, to step into this role of not just being a business owner, but building a brand, then that is when perceived expertise kind of starts to show up on your doorstep and you're like, oh, this girl is taking herself seriously and look at these photos that she got done. And, you know, that does a lot in people's minds and their perception of you. Um, and celebrity, that is all perceived, right? Celebrity status is all perception in, in the public eye. And so this is something within your control to, to do. So, um, so there's this idea that once you get personal branded photos or maybe styled photos and you start to kind of have this perceived expertise or this perceived celebrity, um, people start to become curious. It's, you're no longer just a graphic designer. You're no longer just a coach. You're no longer just an author. When you start to put yourself out there, people become curious and they want to know like, um, what, what is this person about? And, and I really like her style. I like the way she carries herself. Um, a lot of that has to do like, you can be a home flipper, but if you carry yourself a certain way, like people don't want to work with you. Um, and so that is what we're doing. We're building a personal brand here um, that allows people to get to know you, but it also does this really cool thing as well. It allows you to stop being a salesperson, like a business person. And when you kind of show up a little bit more as a human and say like, hey, this is what I do. And you start to show up as a friend on social media and to say, hey, I can help you with this. Or here's some value for free, like no charge, like get started with this. And when you continue to do that, People say, oh, this person knows what they're talking about. And when it comes time for them to hire somebody, you're front of mind. And that is where you always want to be. So um, it allows us to kind of show up more as a friend, um, as a partner, to kind of slide into this role. And you can start to extend invitations to solutions, right? Hey, I have this solution. I'd love to invite you to take it, take me up on it. Um, and, and do less convincing of people to try to work with you. Hopefully that makes sense. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Drop me some answers in the comment sections below so that I know that I'm not like totally off the rails here and you guys are on the same page as me. So how do you get great brand photos that help people feel like they're getting to know you and it compels them to want to work with you? Um, selfies and candids, again, are a great place to start, but um, there are about six big tips that I wanna cover today and I'll break down some minor points within them, but um, I want to just kind of dig into them and I'm gonna run through them one through six. And if I need to stop and expound on them, I will. So um, the first thing is to find a photographer. Um, last week, my husband was my photographer, so that was a gift, um, but not everyone has somebody in their family, a daughter, a mom, a sister who has professional equipment or an eye for photography or knows how to edit in a certain style that you like. And so the first step is to kind of start keeping an eye out for a photographer that you really like and admire. You like their work, you like their Instagram feed, you like their filters, you like the way they pose people. Um, and this is another thing that's really important to take into consideration is not every type of photographer can produce what you're looking for. Um, Photographers, just like designers in any other industry, music people have a niche. So if they're really good at wedding photography, they may not be the best fit for personal branding photography or really good headshots. They're going to have similar skill sets. But if you notice someone has a, kind of like a film look to their photography or they use a certain style of filters that are kind of dark, but your style is really bright and airy and colorful, they're not going to be able to produce the same look necessarily because their their eye is trained to look for certain types of locations and light settings and that stuff will all end up coming into play with your overall aesthetic and um so the editing style the angles with which they shoot the the coloring style in their photos like that's going to make a difference in the end result in your website in your instagram feed all of that good stuff um, but another thing to look for in a photographer is that they really understand and care about helping someone build their personal brand. Um, and they really like working with clients in this particular industry. Now that is not to say that somebody couldn't do this, but these are things to kind of look for. So making sure they understand your vision and what you're trying to accomplish 
wedding photographers know what they're trying to accomplish for weddings. Um, and that is all well and good, but someone who's a personal brand photographer, they're doing something different and they're pulling something different out of their clients. So let me know if that makes sense. Um, another thing that you wanna look for in a photographer is that there's someone that you feel comfortable around. This was a really big deal for me because I'm an introvert and I, I know that there are very few people who bring out my most genuine smile. And my husband is one of those people. And so I felt very comfortable with him to be able to say like, hey, is my hair look okay? Hey, does this pose look okay? And trust him to be honest with me, to be like, oh girl, that's not your look. That's not your look, all right? So um, make sure that there's there they are someone that you feel comfortable around. And then lastly, when it comes to considering your photographer, consider the budget. I know people who have paid $100 for great photos. Um, I know people who have gotten their photos done for free because they had someone in the family and they turned out awesome. I also know women who've dropped a thousand plus dollars on headshots and branded styled photography. And that is totally okay because they knew exactly what they were investing in. And there's certainly different, different um, tiers and levels of investment with a photographer but always consider the budget. If you really, really like this person's style of photography, save up for it and invest in it. This is an investment in your brand and in your business. But if you know you can get the same result with someone in your family, then do it. But don't just compromise and say, well, I can't afford that. And I'm going to go with someone for 50 bucks and you end up wasting your time, wasting their time. You don't like their pictures. You don't want to use them. They're not building your brand. That is a poor investment. So if it's just a couple extra hundred dollars, save up for that, sell your kitchen table, like do something, um, sell your shoes, sell something in your wardrobe or your closet, sell instruments that aren't being played and invest in the branding or the piece of your business that you need to invest in next. The next thing to consider, number two, for preparing for your styled shoot is props and staging. This is kind of fun and you get to be creative with it and your photographer will be able to give you some insights, especially if they understand personal branding um, and that type of styled shoot. So um, some things that you um, might wanna use are like your laptop, if you are on your cell phone or you're a social media person, um, your, you know, your mobile device, if you're a big coffee or tea drinker, maybe you're a fitness person and you, you like the green smoothies. Like if that's you, go for it. Um, if you want to show like maybe some behind the scenes, um, maybe bring your, um, put on some workout clothes and bring your Pilates mat um, and your mat bag. If you're a fitness person, um, bring your, your fitness gear, like your bands or your weights or whatever it is that you, you utilize. Um, one of the things I used was books that I talk about often. I'm really big into productivity and planning as well as Strengths Finders 2.0. So you better bet that I brought my planner and my books um, to take pictures with because I talk about them all the time. Um, glasses. So if you wear glasses some of the time like I do, like you can switch them out uh, with some shoot shots with you with your glasses on and without. And there are, it's really crazy. And I'm going to get into this in planning your outfits, but small details can really change um, your pictures. So Consider your props and the staging, um, maybe even business cards or pins or other desk accessory type things can really be cool. You can do your own um, flat lays um, so that everything is really on brand. Like that is your mug and that is your pin that they always see in your videos. Um, my one friend, she did like um, confetti and glitter. It was a celebration type of uh, photo shoot and that can be really fun as well, depending on your brand. So. If you are kind of feeling stuck on what to use as a prop, some great questions to ask yourself are things like, if you look at your social media right now in your Facebook group or your Instagram or your Twitter, what are you using right now as a stock image? And what could you replace that with, with you in that image with that same thing? So maybe it is um, a picture of someone working out. Well, maybe you could replace yourself, um, replace that photo with yourself working out or um, a green smoothie. Well, maybe you can have a picture of you holding a green smoothie. Um, so think about what you're currently using stock imagery for and then replace it with yourself, pretty easy. Once you have clarity on those two things, it's time to make a shots list. And I really like to lean into Pinterest for this because I'm a visual person. Um, so consider the props you're bringing and, and some of the solo shots 
And I like to kind of organize it with like, these are my essential photos. I know where I'm going to use these. I'm going to use this as my banner. I want to use this one as an ad. I want to use this one on my Instagram. Um, and so making sure that like, it's really important that people know that I have a Facebook group and I'm on, I'm an online entrepreneur. So I'm going to make sure that I get some shots with my laptop. If you're a fitness person, making sure that you have some shots of you working out or you on your Pilates mat or something like that. Um, and one word of caution when it comes to planning your photo shoot with Pinterest is that um, it's really good to get inspiration from Pinterest. What's not great is to kind of pigeonhole yourself and copy exactly what you see and kind of push your photographer to do exactly what you have in your Instagram or sorry, your Pinterest board. What you should do is look to it for inspiration. I like that they're in the kitchen. I like that she has this color outfit on. I like that her pose is really relaxed like this. Um, but allow your photographer in the moment and in that space to coach you on what looks best, depending on the lighting, depending on the environment, depending on you, um, and what looks good on you, allow them to, um, be creative and do what they do best, which is photography. So just a word to the wise on that. Um, and then another note is knowing where you're going to use these images can really make a big difference in what you receive at the, at the end of your day. So I know, for example, I'm gonna use a lot of my images on my website, and I know that I wanna have a button to the right or the left of me, and with an invitation and a call to action for someone to download something. For example, maybe it's a freebie or a workbook. So I want there to be enough space to my left or my right for me to put some words in a button, okay? So I ask my photographer, who's my husband, um, hey, can you make sure that I want some straight on shots, but can I also have you do like what's called the rule of thirds? So they kind of break up the picture. I would be the primary focus in one third of the photo and the other two thirds would be kind of like empty space, um, just trees or just wall or something like that, something really clean that wouldn't distract from words on the side. And so when we know what our end result we want to be, then we can kind of work backwards and present that to the photographer. So then, um, again, some of my must have shots were with my laptop. Um, another one was with my strengths finder book because I love that book and I talk about it all the time. And then another one was with my planner because I talk about planning ahead and routines and systems a lot. So those were essential things for me, for you. It might be, um, if you're a mompreneur, like kid stuff, um, uh, maybe toys that your kids love or something that um, is more family related or um, is restorative to you as a mom. Um, and then if you're a fitness person, you know, maybe it's your, um, your weights or your mats or the space where you like to work out. So um, let's move on to number four planning your outfits. And I know when I was reaching out to you guys in the community beforehand, some of you said like, I don't know how to plan outfits. That's the most stressful part for me. So I wanted to make sure that I covered this pretty well. Um, planning your outfits should be fun because you should get to wear something that you're comfortable in, something that makes you feel confident. And I like to use another adjective, whatever it is that you're trying to portray an attribute. So maybe it makes you feel radiant. Maybe it makes you feel like a queen. Maybe it just makes you feel pretty. Maybe it makes you feel strong. Maybe it makes you feel powerful. Um, you know, clothing really can change how we feel. Um, it should also be comfortable to wear. If you are uncomfortable in your shoes or your pants are too tight or, you know, the jacket's a little too small or a little too big and it kind of feels frumpy, like that translates in the picture. So make sure that you invest in, and a couple outfits, I, I think I brought three, um, two to three outfits and make sure that they fit well, that you're comfortable in them. Um, and, and that will translate really nicely into your photos. Um, something to also be aware of is patterns and locations. So if you are a very bright and vibrant person and you like a lot of pattern and you like a lot of color, that is awesome. Just make sure that your location is very clean so that there's not a lot of contrast and too much busyness that the focus is where you want it to be. Um, so then in the opposite direction, like if you have um, brand colors, 
I have yellow and navy blue right now as my brand colors. And so I had a, a plain yellow dress. I also used some plain blue. Uh, I used some blue stripes. Um, you know, using these things um, really intentionally and thoughtfully. Um, jewelry, I like to keep things simple. But if your thing is like statement necklaces and statement jewelry because you're in the fashion blogging world, then by all means, do that. But um, just know that sometimes that doesn't translate well into photos. Sometimes less is more. So one piece of jewelry um, that is your color um, or that is complementary to your color can really be very powerful. So keep it simple. Stay comfortable. Wear something that makes you feel good. Be confident and um, just have fun with this piece. So, um, and also just keep it clean and simple. I think that that's, that translates best in your imagery, especially if you plan on using any type of words with it. If you're just using it for your Instagram feed, you can have fun. So, um, let's see. Location, 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 location. Um, I chose to have my photo shoot at something called the Bell Grove Plantation. I am... Um, in Virginia. I'm based on the East Coast. And that is something that I felt like really represented myself. It's a very historic location. Um, a big word for me, if you don't already know, is legacy. And so um, this was actually the birthplace of James Madison, one of our presidents. And it was really cool to be there. And um, and so the, the place had a lot of just very beautiful ambient lighting. I had been there before. I knew what I, I could envision uh, myself in these rooms and the colors could very well work with my brand. Um, I also liked the outdoor space. I liked um, the library because I'm a big book fan. Um, and it just felt like me. This is a place where I could very comfortably spend time and hang out and um, aspire to leave a legacy. I want to leave a legacy, um, not just for my kids, but also for my grandkids and for others to build upon. And so this is what that space really represented for me. And so when you are thinking about your location, it really needs to be about showing off the personality of you and your brand um, and your business. So if, if you are have a, maybe more of a lifestyle brand, consider going to some kind of coffee shop, maybe an ice cream parlor that has like a lot of fun colors or something. Um, just make sure that it reflects a space that you would hang out in, like genuinely, like you would go there. Um, I think if you are a food blogger, like a kitchen, like a beautiful kitchen that is not going to detract from your brand, but also like that is a space that you spend time in. So it doesn't have to be your kitchen, but it could be like your dream kitchen. Maybe you rent out an Airbnb and do a photo shoot at this awesome, beautifully remodeled kitchen, right? Um, there's a lot of room for you to get creative with a styled shoot. Um, but also a tip for location is make sure you're not shooting all of your pictures in the same exact location in the same exact room. That's gonna get boring visually. So think about going inside and outside and using a room or a different color wall. Um, maybe you're at the counter, if you're a food blogger, again, using this example, you're at the counter and cooking something, maybe another one, you're at the dining room table and you're eating something. Um, just make sure that you change it up a little bit and also be sure to ask your photographer for local recommendations. Um, if this is what they do and they're also in this personal branding space and they should know some pretty good local areas for you to go. Um, where does she like to shoot? Where does she get the best results? Um, where, what places have the best lighting um, or the best backdrops for what you're casting vision for? Um, and so those, um, those are my tips for location. And then lastly, these are just some final thoughts. They're not end all be all. But one thing that somebody mentioned um, in our Facebook group community was to remember your purpose. And I thought that that was so good because um, when we think about our clients and we visualize what it is that we help them do, and even if we have done that before, that's also a great place to start. Um, like the results that you've helped them to get, the benefits they've gotten from having worked with you, that should put a smile on your face. And that should put a, a really genuine smile on your face. So holding your clients front of mind like why are you doing this what are they going to resonate with are they going to respond well to your outfits and your location things like that um, that's gonna really I think translate like there's these just little 
non-tangible, hard to put words to things when it comes to art, which is super subjective, right? Um, you know, when we remember our purpose and remember our clients and why we're doing this in the first place, especially if we're uncomfortable in front of the camera, that should really help you, um, especially in your headspace. It becomes less about you and how your hair looks and more about them. Um, make the most of your photos by spreading them out. Um, you don't have to utilize all of your photos at once. Um, if, especially if you've been thoughtful and considering the seasons and doing something a little more neutral that you can use all year round, especially if it's like indoors, that's really going to um, help you to stretch out the use of this particular styled shoot. Um, crop tools are just amazing. I do this a lot for stock imagery where I will take one image and I'll just use this little itty bitty corner over here. Um, and because there's such high res, high resolution, I can do that and get multiple images out of just one. And so if you're thoughtful in how you shoot your, um, your personal brand images, you can do the same thing. You can do something where you're just writing and people can recognize your pen and your notebook and maybe your hand or a signature piece of jewelry that you have. Um, and then you can use the top half where it looks like you're looking thoughtfully down and writing something. So you can get two images out of one and make those bad layers go a whole lot further, um, especially if you're investing at a higher level for this brand asset. So those are my branding tips. And I hope that you find them super duper helpful. I'm so thrilled to be able to share with you um, some of the things that I learned at this shoot. Um, you know, taking your time, taking a deep breath, um, being creative. Sometimes locations and positions, they don't work. They don't feel right. They don't feel comfortable. Have fun. Laugh at yourself. Laugh with the photographer. Don't put a lot of pressure on this. Just have fun. I think that that's the best piece of advice that I could give you um, when planning your styled shoot. Um, and, and that's it for now. So if you have any additional, um, tips or tricks, please share them below. And the more, the better, the more, the merrier. I'd love to hear what you have learned because I do plan on doing this again in the future. And, you know, it's always good to build on what you know. And, um, again, don't forget that I've opened my calendar for two spaces. If you're interested for one-to-one -one coaching to get your next clients. I'm going to talk with you about all things branding and business strategy to help you get your first or next client. So reach out, book a discovery call with me or a clarity call, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we can talk about whether or not this is a good fit for you right now in your business in the season that you're in. So that's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me and for spending your time with me this morning. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys.